A lot of people have been asking for some clarification on the um, E-Flight 2 meter uh, T28 uh, landing gear mod. This is how it should look when it's all done. So again, this is a strut, a front strut from a free wing A10, the 80 millimeter size, a big one. Um, so what you need to do is uh, basically connect this strut into the stock retract of the version 2 T28. So this is apparently the stronger retract. I don't know if this fits on the version one, um, but other reviewers have said that um, the retract should drop into the version one, um, even though this is a version two or a newer, stronger uh, retract mechanism. So the work I think was uh, getting the strut to fit into um, the retract because they're two different brands and I think they're different diameters. So I'll show you what I had to do to get that in place. Um, the A10 retract or the reach, uh, the A10 strut should fit perfectly into this um, uh, 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 landing gear bay. So I didn't have to cut anything on the actual uh, strut itself, but there is a little bit of a modification on that pin there that connects the strut to the retract. But you'll be using all the same hardware from the stock um, um, components so that the steering and the servo is just gonna stay the same. The only thing we're changing is really that strut so we can get some suspension onto the front gear. So that's how it should work. Um, steering will work. And then drop it back in. So it should work with absolutely no hang ups. Um, I adjusted my mix so that when it's uh, retracted, I don't have any steering input. But once I gear down, <coughs> uh, steering is enabled, but only when it's uh, when gears are deployed. That's the rudder servo that you hear, but no steering uh, when the uh, gears are retracted. All right, so separately, this is what your um, retract should look like. So this is the actual uh, retract servo um, from the stock version two. Um, there's gonna be this pin that's attached to the trunnion and also the steering mechanism. All right, so the problem I had was this uh, pin, the diameter is actually bigger than what the A10 strut would accept. <clears throat> um, unfortunately, I don't have the stock uh, uh, A10 retract uh, the way it was when I got it, but what I had to do was basically drill the uh, hole a little bit bigger so that it would fit into this pin. So unfortunately, I didn't have a drill that was exactly the right size. So when I put it in, there is a, a little bit of play. If you can see, sorry, it's, I'm just doing this one-handed, guys. But there's a little bit of play that I didn't like. Even if I tighten that down, it's going to wobble a little bit. So rather than have to buy a whole new uh, strut, what do we do? Right, so I went and got a Sprite can <clears throat> and cut a little collar or a shim to be able to put around this or yeah, uh, this pin so that the strut would fit. Right, so what I also did was leave a little bit of a gap so that when the uh, when this little collar would uh, close, the grub screw would kind of fit in between the two, so it would still, you know, kind of hold the uh, the strut in place. What I also had to do was file down uh, a flat spot so that the strut wouldn't shake around um, while it's uh, connected to the pin. So re just remember, if you don't have the exact drill to fit this pin and this uh, 
strut in. It's not a big deal. You know, obviously you want to get exactly the right thing, but you know, not everything is perfect when you, it comes to different brands and different tools. So there's always a way to fix it. So in this case, just make a little shim. You know, I just cut this out of a uh, aluminum sheet. This was flat before, but I just rolled it and then it fit over the, uh, the pin. But what I did is I ended up kind of putting it into the strut first and then that kind of like allowed everything to fit in. So I'll show you what to do um, once that's all fitted and how it would look. So this is the little collar that we cut out of the, that Sprite can um, and insert it into the strut. So you can push it all the way down, but I chose to kind of leave it out so you guys can see it. Um, and then basically just slide this over the, the uh, retract pin and that should basically get rid of the play. So we'll see how that looks. Let me just try to fit it in with one hand. Okay, so that's basically slotted in now. And then you can see the, the sleeve is right there. But let me just tidy this up, tighten everything down, and I'll show you how the full assembly looks. Okay, so this is how it looks with everything um, kind of tidied up. So I basically pushed the, uh, the sleeve a little further down the strut, uh, tightened the grub screw in, and now everything is, is rock solid. Like there's no play um, in any direction except steering. So it's, it's rock solid now. There's no gap, there's no space. It's not gonna wobble or free. Just make sure you use Loctite. And remember that there's two grub screws, one for this side and the back side. And remember that the um, um, the suspension has to face forward like this. Um, sometimes people forget, or I think I did one <laughs> when I first installed it, this thing was upside down. Um, it wouldn't retract fully. So just make sure that this side of the um, uh, of the linkage is facing uh, the ground or up to the ceiling or whatever, but this should be facing out, flat side should be uh, towards the gear bay. Um, so I'll basically show you the actuation, make sure everything is working, um, and remember to tighten that, uh, the other side of this. <clears throat> so that's the uh, other side grub screw, which you have to tighten, use Loctite so that this doesn't slide around or doesn't uh, vibrate out. So just remember that, um, you know, Make sure that everything um, is uh, tightened uh, before you put, lock everything up and put everything back in because it's kind of a, a, <laughs> a hassle to kind of unscrew everything again if you mess up. Uh, so just things to remember, uh, two, two grub screws here um, and the links facing uh, the front of the plane or up uh, so that everything kind of fits again. And then uh, I'll put the uh, steering linkage back on and then everything should be good again. Everything is back uh, and connected. The steering linkage is back on. The grub screw over here has been tightened and locked tight. Uh, remember that there's two. So final checks before we pack this thing up. The linkage is facing the front of the plane. And let's check to see if Good. <clears throat> okay, so with that, basically everything is uh, the way it should be. Uh, no play on the steering um, in terms of uh, where that strut is connected. It's basically just the steering direction, but the strut itself and the pin is solid. Um, so you definitely shouldn't be getting any play there. The other thing with uh, the mods I did, but this is kind of uh, a little bit more uh, time consuming, is that this uh, linkage here, the trailing link suspension, I put two springs. So there's actually two springs in here. One is the thinner gauge and the other one is the stock spring. So what that does is basically when it's absorbing little bumps and pebbles or cracks on the runway, and it only goes a certain way. Like that's the, that's the thin gauge spring. So it kind of actuates it um, easily. So that's kind of like, you know, how suspension is really supposed to work. But then once bigger bounces, it takes more pressure to get the, the main spring to compress. So you've got literally a dual stage spring setup. 
So you get the little bumps here, which is kind of easy, and it basically pushes it back. And then if you come in with a hard landing, hard landing would still basically absorb it. But most of the suspension is just these little movements so that the plane doesn't look like it's like rickety and shaking down the runway. So I also did that on the main. So it's two springs. One is a stock spring, which is about three quarter length. And then the, the next is a um, thinner gauge spring, but same diameter um, that would fit the strut um, that only goes in about maybe a quarter of an inch or so, or even less. Um, but that'll give you a better um, shock absorb, or basically just better travel uh, for little bumps and then still give you, um, you know, heavier resistance for hard landings without, you know, making the plane feel too stiff on the runway. So that's the mod for the uh, front gear. Um, I'll try to do a video on the mains, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. What happened here is just kind of adjusting the size of the pin to the strut. Um, I think it's more or less the same for the main gears. You guys get the idea. But hopefully that helps. If you guys still have questions, just let me know.